Page 903, 903 is the continuation of geometric probability where we used our calculator right over here on the screen, you can see it, and we had some calculations for the probability of landing in different sections on a dartboard. I'm using the graphic from page 901, so right here we go. So this graphic that you can see has dimensions on it for the dartboard that we're considering. So some heights and some depths and some sections. And we're going to use that information, some radii and some diameters. We need those information for us. Have page 901 ready to go. Now, as we continue this problem over here on the side, I've got this number 247.4495088. That number is the area of the dartboard. And every time that we have to find an area of the dartboard, I can just go back up in the yellow calculator to using it. So please make sure you've done your 902 notes and you have the yellow calculator. You didn't delete anything. That was my observation in the middle of the last video. Don't delete. You can still go back up and use. Let's find the area of the double 20. Now the double 20 section, I'll make this a little bit bigger. The double 20 section is this section right here. And it does have some curve to it. So our calculation is going to have a little bit of estimation involved. But honestly, with the decimals as picky and small as they are, it is okay for us to make that, that assessment. If you want to be super picky, we could say, outer ring, inner ring, divide by 20. And we could do the pi r squared calculation again, like we did in the previous page. But it won't really be that far off if we just treat it like it is a rectangle and multiply base times height. So that would be 0 0.35 times 2.05. And so the area of the double 20 is going to be 0 0.7175. We know the area of the dartboard already from the previous video. It's 247.45. I guess I'm going to give it more decimals because I can see them on the calculator over there. So then the probability of double 20. Do I need to show you how to calculate that? I did already a couple of times. Why don't you pause the video, skip forward, see if you can write the probability of landing in double 20 based on the information that I've helped you see right now. Okay, so pause. For those of you still here, thank you for being here. Wish you would have paused and skipped forward. Or you're coming back to watch it again, and that's very smart of you. The probability of landing in double 20 is the area of landing in a 20, 7175, divided by the total area, 247.4495. So if I go to my calculator, I go up, up, enter, divide by, up, 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 up. There we go. You can adjust up and down, by the way, if you pass it. Just go back down. Enter 0 0.0029. If you want to write that as a percent, right now hit times 100. And we have 0.29%. I saw the 8 followed by 995, and it's like it's all just going to round up to 900. So maybe throw in a 0 right here just to make it believable. It's going to round to 0.290%. Okay, maybe you skip forward and you're waiting for the answer for 1G. So let's do that one now. The probability of landing on 20 without a double or triple score. So we're only in the single score section. And so if we do the entire 20 section and then subtract out the area of double and subtract out the area of triple, then we'll have what's left, which is the area of only 20. Did you hear me describe that? Are you watching this on closed captions so you can translate and see along with what I'm saying? To find the area of single 20, we're going to get the entire 20 sector, and we're going to subtract out the double 20 section and the triple 20 section. And I'm going to go look at my previous notes. I already have all of this information. We calculated in the previous uh, video, in the previous page, the area of the 20 section, all of it, to be 6.98995. And of course, that's square inches. Then we calculated the area of the double 20 to be 0 0.7175. 0 0.7175. And we've also calculated the area of the triple 20, 0 
of course, square inches. And all of those calculations are in that calculator. So you just gotta scroll up until you find them, and then starting from 6.98, uh, 995, we're going to subtract off this number and then subtract off this number. So we'll get the area of the single. Okay. Um, I will admit, did I delete that? Let me go all the way up to the top. Boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom, up, 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 up. I did. Um, I deleted thinking I wouldn't need it. And so that's my like, oh, I wish I hadn't deleted it. I have uh, to retype the calculation. It's just retyping the number, I guess. Point, uh, 6 6.98995. I have enough decimals, though. I feel good about that. If you don't have enough decimals, then this kind of gets a little bit like, yeah, you're cheating. Minus, scroll up, 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 up. 0.7175. Minus, scroll up, 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 up. So that was the uh, double 20. And here's the triple 20. So therefore, the combined area of just the single 20 score is 5.8. 831 square inches. And if I divide that number, 831, by 247.4495, I'm going to get the probability of landing in not double, not triple. Up, enter, divide by, up, 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 up. Here, here, nope. Keep on, there it is. 0 0.0236. Or 2.36%. Okay, 2.36% chance. Low, but certainly you have at least a percent that's a whole, like a big number. The other percentages we've seen have been less than 1%, like by a lot. So, yeah. And if you look at the graphic, there's absolutely a reason to believe that there's just more area in the gray or darker section than there is in the green sections. And then out of the entire total of all the dartboard, that's not a lot of area, but it certainly is substantial. That you, you know, It's plausible. The idea of probability is how likely will something happen. Okay, now we're on to question two. Suppose the inner bullseye is worth 50 points. And the outer bullseye is worth 25 points. What is the expected value of the dartboard? So the inner bullseye, the, the, bring this into consideration. They're saying if you land in the red, you just get a plus 50. And if you land in the green, you get a plus 25. Now, mind you, that is not the highest way to earn points. You could do triple uh, 20. Triple 20, triple 20, triple 20, and that'd be better than bullseye, bullseye, bullseye. Doesn't look as good, but points wise, you want to be in this one specifically. Now, any section that is not double or triple, I'm looking at my notes, I'm sorry. So, let me bring back on camera. So the probability of any section that's not the double or the triple. Oh, okay, so that's the probability of single. Oh, yo, yo, yo. So the probability of any section that's not double or triple is this one. Uh, Let's write it in percent, 2.36%. The probability of any double is this one right here, 0.29%. Yo, I figured it back out. Okay, so what, what I had to think about for a second was, what am I trying to calculate? If I am trying to calculate like the probability of all of it, any of it, where are we at in the mix of this? Okay, so let's just see about taking away the probability of what's inside and outside. So the probability of any section, not double or triple, is 2.3, sorry for the pen markup, 3.6%. A double, in a single number, it'd be 0.29%, and the probability of a triple is, previous page, probability of getting triple 20 is, well, triple anything, is 0.178%. So if you add up all of the 1 through 20 point totals, so that would be a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3, 
There is a clever trick way to do that, and I think I'm gonna show you right now. So it's actually discovered by Carl Friedrich, not discovered, utilized by Carl Friedrich Gauss first, back in the 1700s. So if I arrange, I'm gonna write them all out. Do you need to write them all out? No, you just need the answer. So maybe you wanna skip forward and not pay attention to a really cool mathematical idea where you are amazing and I appreciate you and you're gonna stick around just to see what he was thinking. If you take the numbers from one through 20 and we're gonna add them, uh, he was told as a 10 year old boy in his math class and the teacher was just so frustrated and fed up with all the other 10 year old boys that he said, sit down, get out your, your chalk and your slates and we're gonna solve a math problem. And he gave him out of the numbers from one to 100 and figured that would take them all day. And Gauss said, I see a pattern. What's one plus 20? 21. What's two plus 19? 21. What's three plus 18? 21. What's four plus 17? 21. What's five plus 16? 21. What's six plus 15? 21. Seven and 14. 8 and 13, 9 and 12, 10 and 11. So then how many 21s do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The numbers from 1 to 20 add up to 210. Let's try it out. I'm going to let technology help me out. Here we go. Hey Siri, what's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 14 plus 15 plus 16 plus 17 plus 18 plus 19 plus 20? That would be 210. I feel pretty good about that. How do you? So if you add up all of the scores, see where I'm going with this one. If you add up all of the scores from 1 to 20, each of them contribute to a total that is 210 points. So any section, right, we can divide, right, we can divide 210 divided by 20 and get an average score, like, points total. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right, that's right. So the probability of landing in any section that's not a double or a triple, we're going to take this probability and we're going to multiply it by this point total and we're going to get our expected value of points you get just from throwing the dart and it landing in the single value. So the expected value for a single is going to be the probability of a single, so this one, times 210. The expected value for one dart throw. Then we're going to add to that the probability of a double. So a double is going to get the point total, but it's going to also double the point total. So there's a 0.29% chance of getting twice the score, and we have a summation of all 210 values plus the probability of a triple. So a triple is going to give you three times the score. If you add up all of the scores that are possible and multiply by the probability, you get an expected value, but they all give you three times the amount. The probability of landing in the outer but not the inner, we calculated that when we got 0.417%. 0.417%, and landing in the outer section is worth 25 points. So plus, 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 the probability of outer times 25. And then last of all, the probability of landing in the inner times 50. And so the probability of landing in the inner section it's the area of the inner ring. The probability of landing in the inner ring is 0 0.0793. So we'll set the paper back aside. 0.0793%. And so if I've <clears throat> checked my teacher's guide and I've checked my calculations, the rest of this is a calculator problem. So if you want, try to do the calculation yourself where you're just substituting these values into this now horrendously long formula. I'm going to add on a sticky note where I've put the answer to this. 
So the sticky note's gonna do the final calculation because I'm running out of space. But I'm gonna do probability times 210. Probability times two times 210. Probability times three times 210. Probability of outer, probability of inner. The probability of outer times 25. The probability of inner times 50. And that's gonna give me, close that parentheses, the expected value for one dart throw is, time to go to the calculator and do some work. Calculator, okay. And for that reason, I'm actually gonna switch the calculator screen to be much bigger. So keypad and side screen, we should be able to see a lot more now. Up here, escape, escape. Up here, I know that I've got the 2.36. So I'm just gonna work systematically through the problem. I don't. Oh, I deleted that part. Why did I delete that part? So 0 0.0236. Oh no, I didn't, it's right there. What am I thinking? Okay, so this times 210. That's the probability of a single times the expected value, the total summation of the expected value score. Plus, now I need the probability of a double, and a double was 0 0.029. So I'm gonna enter to bring that down, times two, times 210. So now I've added the probability of getting a double points, times two, times the total points. Now I need the probability of a triple, and a triple was 0.178. This one. I use the decimals, not the percentages. So the decimal times three, times 210 because I want to multiply the probability of getting a triple times the fact that a triple is triple the points, and this is the total number of points, plus the probability of the outer 0.417%. 0.417, there it is. This is the probability of getting a not a bullseye, but like a, in the green, right? Getting a Gerald in the green. So we're gonna multiply this by 25. G for Gerald, right? Okay, but not a Roy, we want a red. So the probability of landing in the red, 25 points for that Gerald though, landing in the red is going to be probability of the inner percentage, 0 0.0793, 0 0.00793, there it is. And I'm gonna multiply that, ooh, they bring in some uh, notation that's called scientific notation. We like to see that. 50. Okay. Here it is. Any single dart throw has an expected value on average, it's right, of, of course it's right, I knew that, of 7.43. The expected value of one dart throw, 7.43 points per throw. Granted, you could get way higher. You can also get ones, twos, and threes. You could get up to 60 points in one dart throw. But on average, of every single dart space where it could land in the bullseye, right, throwing at that bullseye, the chance of getting any points at all, on average, is gonna average out to 7.43 points per throw. I just, I'm just so proud. There's nothing left to talk about. We've done geometry. We've done probability. We've done decimal math. We've done percentage math. We've talked about expected value and summations and all of it through this entire process, keeping everything straight persisting, persevering, using our tools. This question is beautiful. It is what makes math amazing. And seeing that process and knowing that process and being able to use and harness all of that resource, that's what makes math like so powerful and why I'm so passionate about it. Being able to put something to work for me because my brain can figure it out. Your brain can figure this out. Your brain is capable. So. Leaving with that, thank you for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. I hope you were able to see the process, if not watch it again, 
like Einstein would do when he would read a book in mathematics or science and didn't understand it. He would stop, start over at the beginning and go through it again. And maybe you don't have to go all the way through to the beginning, but you could go to the beginning of the video or go back two videos and watch from that point on because this is a powerful example. It's also really, really tough. And a challenge is worth it because every problem worth attack will prove its worth by fighting back. See you in the next video.